Welcome to the Podski. What? Oh, yeah. You understand, baby? Dig it. Let me tell you another thing. First name John, last name Baker. Uh-huh. Brother. Hello and welcome to the Podski. I'm your host, the man of a thousand gimmicks, John Baker. It is episode... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number 45, yeah. Oh yeah, 45, brother. Uh-huh. <laughs> the number of Michael Jordan on his way back in. Uh-huh. Freak out. It is episode 45. Today we are going to be doing the AEW Double or Nothing and the WWE Night of Champions preview show. So we got two shows we're going to preview. We also got two shows we are going to review since we had uh, the three-man booth was in attendance for some shows this week. So, uh, but we'll get to them in a little bit. But uh, you heard uh, Andretti there popping in with some 45s. And uh, he also had, uh, we got Mongoose in here too. Mongoose, what do you have for the number 45? What does that mean for us? Well, here's what I have. In numerology, the number 45 is going to give innovation, the ability to research deeply and communicate. So what I, uh, to tie this back to the podcast realm, once again, I can only see this meaning good things and good fortune for the Podski and for the next 27 years of audio that we're able to put together here. We can all go back to the number 45 as being perhaps an inflection point where we went from kind of decent to pretty good. Um, Also looking over here, uh, I'm looking at... uh, what do I have? I have 45 in balance is the human database with access to answers, big ideas and solutions, rebuilding society, a first mover building foundation for the future, like a librarian that organizes his mind according to topics. And you know, what's funny about that is that it's talking about organizing your mind according to topics and, you know, peek behind the curtain here. If we're going to break this fourth wall down, uh, Chris Jericho style, This is one of the uh, most unorganized uh, show preps that we've ever had. So I'm really feeling pretty good uh, for the outlook here, because if this, it means that we are going to write and, and, and roll on through, I'm ready, man. So I'd like to say first and foremost, um, that we are in a beautiful spring season here. Uh, Spring being the season of birth and regeneration And so we are past the doldrums of winter. We are in 70, 80 degree days over here. I've had many a uh, porch beer ski uh, over the last few weeks, uh, you know, just sucking in the sun. I'm breathing in the uh, chemically sprayed air, uh, fighting pollen and everything, (laughs) fighting pollen and everything else that goes on. And so, brother, I am ready for some, some summertime. I can't beat that with anything. <laughs> Not with a stick. <laughs> what a baby Not... face promo, dude. Hey, hey, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy cow. Yeah. How do we even follow that up? Where do we? The show's over. See you guys next week. Uh, yep. <laughs> Full disclosure, just so everybody knows, too. Uh, I. Have uh, I've decided that I'm I'm not buying wrestling shirts anymore. I'm buying shirts with mongooses on them. <laughs> and so so uh i got my first one like on you're, you're one for one <laughs> yep for, first one is on right here and so if you are ever uh prowling the streets and see a good looking mug with a um unkept goatee and a uh pirate's hat on that's also rocking some jays and a, a mongoose shirt well you done see me in the wild yo I'll sign autographs. I'll take pictures. I'll do all that stuff. Just leave my kid alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Well, we also got uh, <laughs> we also got Andretti in here. Uh, it's a big weekend for the Andrettis. The Indy Five Hundred is this weekend. So uh, yeah, will you, you be? Know, we're we're taking it. We're gonna take it home, and you know, and it's uh, we're gonna we're gonna pull it out, and then we got a lot of wrestling to watch too. So it's gonna be a big weekend here. Was well, uh, it is. We're, this show is going to be dropping on May 25th. It's going to be dropping tomorrow, not at regular time. So it'll be a little behind schedule, but uh, 
what are we looking at for the uh, birthday skis for uh, for the week ski? Yeah, happy birthday tomorrow to uh, a guy that, you know, just has always been a really, really good person to be around. Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> and happy birthday to him. I don't care. Good luck. <laughs> He's belt, a lover. Put the belt on. Put the belt on Del Rio. Yeah. yeah I nothing, mean, they did. Nothing, yeah, nothing could go wrong. So, to, <laughs> so for tomorrow, for the uh, they should have done Night of Champions tomorrow and just done the birthday, the birthday brawl. Uh, and put the belt up. Put both belts up because also birthday tomorrow, Roman Reigns. And happy birthday to him. I don't care. Good luck. All right, little tribal chief birthday ski. Yeah, yeah. happy happy birthday, Mister Inouye. But I, I'll tell you what, I got I got I need like I need like one and a half good minutes to just rant about the current situation with the bloodline and whatnot. But we'll get to that whenever we get to our preview. I got All a story. Right. For you. I, I got a quick yeah. story for you. So today, you know, we bought the house, right? And we're uh-huh. we're doing a lot of work over there. And I'm going back and forth, you know, it's 30 minutes each way. And I'm sometimes going over there twice a day to do stuff or to, you know, meet with pest control or contractors or whatever. Right. So today I'm over there and I'm trying to put uh, the knobs on the drawers in the mat. Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Brian okay. knobs. I, w- I wish I had Brian knobs there to pull this thing off for me. It would have been nice, but I'm over there, and of course, the screws that they give you with the hardware are garbage, and they won't reach all the way through the drawer. And I somehow managed to get the other one stuck and can't get the screw out of the back. So I try a plumber's wrench, I try pliers, everything. I'm trying not to screw up the wood because we just got everything painted, and I'm screaming and yelling, and I got wasp playing really loud in the house, and I got I got to go to Home Depot for the second time today. So I go over to Home Depot, I buy a brand new Milwaukee hacksaw, and I get a, uh, I get a, a buy, a buy metal blade to go in there. And there was a guy squatting down behind like a, a big, um, advertising thing, like a big Milwaukee stand in the, in the, in the, um, in the screws and nails section, right? Not the mm-hmm. chewing and racing section, the screws and nails section. Okay. So the guy is squatting down and I can't see him. Okay. And I finally found the size I needed and I am talking out loud because I think I'm the only one in the aisle. And I say something to the effect of, Oh yeah, I got the right machine screw size this time to get the job done. Yeah. (laughs) And the dude who I didn't see leans back, leans his head back from behind the stand and looks up at me like, what the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> and, I, and I had a choice to make. I had a choice to make. I could either get embarrassed, I could run away, or I could just kayfabe. And Double I looked down. at him and I went, "What's up, brother?" And then I walked off. I wish he would have answered. I wish he would have followed it, followed through, and just answered you like oh, he was God. just machos back and forth. <laughs> yeah, either, 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 either that or he was just went straight, straight wolf pack like. Yeah. Uh, like 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 brother bricks standing next to Mario at a kid's birthday <laughs> party. Was probably, this guy <laughs> this guy was filthy. He was wearing all kind of work clothes. He was probably sixty. You know, probably you know, probably a, a, a Latino guy. <laughs> he, he leaned back and looked at me like, "What the? What are you doing?" As bad That's... as it is, you just described what I would pick a picture to be a wrestling fan. So <laughs> I, he, he he had he had he had to know. He had to know. He definitely knew he he was he was no selling you for sure. God, I am it, I am wearing a uh, WCW Nitro Spring Breakout Crew shirt from two thousand one, so I had that on too while I was in there. And my in Virginia Tech shorts, so I was I was going pretty hard today in there. Wow, sounds like you're truly having a great time with your haunted house. <laughs> Oh, dude, it's great. It's been fantastic. It's been it's been really fun to go over there ten times a day and to not get anything done and to do you know do a ton of manual labor. It's been awesome. The joys dude, I, of homeownership, dude. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I just I, I I every time that I think of do you know um 
Did you ever see the 13 goes to Scooby-Doo? I'm sure no. I did a long time ago. So the 13 goes to Scooby-Doo, it's, it, it, it's pretty near and dear to my heart because I believe that it, it came out in like, I don't know, 83, 84, 85 or whatever. So it came out in a, in a time when like I was, it was new whenever I was alive, right? And um, so it was played a lot on the Saturday mornings or whatever, whenever they go into the Scooby-Doo rotation. And so the 13 goes to Scooby-Doo is awesome because there is a little Himalayan boy named Flim Flam that joins the roster. Um, and I think he they... could go with Elton. <laughs> Right, 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 right. And they, uh, they, uh, man, he'd have fit right in with the hood rats. Um, but they, uh, just so you know, John, there was a group called the Elton Hood Rats. I, that, so that's a that's a true shout out to, uh, you know, the uh, the DOA of Elton. Um, hashtag, hashtag Elton Hood Rats, right? Right, uh, but there, Vincent Price is in it, and it's 14 episodes long or whatever. He's, That's all wait, it he's is. In the, he's in the Scooby Doo, or he's in the Elton Hood Rats. He's in Scooby Doo and is an honorary Elton Hood Rat. Okay. okay. Um, so he actually, he's double dipping. And so, um, what's awesome is that it's only one season long. It's like 14 episodes because there's 13 ghosts. And the only reason I'm giving you this long-winded diatribe into a cartoon that neither of you have seen is because there are two ghosts that, like, trick and hoodwink Scooby and Shaggy into opening the chest that has all 13 ghosts. And I was really, really, really hoping that Andretti was going to get the reference because I want him so bad to just be um, hoodwinked into open up some ancient chest whenever he goes in there by these same two cartoon ghosts. And then his life really does just go fucking haywire. Look, just I'm absolutely. Gonna, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something right now that you're going to think I'm lying. I, you're going to you're going to think I'm lying. I swear to you, this is this has really happened this morning. I had a dream that I was in the house. OK. And I could feel something not being right, okay? And I went up in the attic, which is 16 feet. You got to use this 18-foot ladder to get into the freaking attic in this house, okay? Dude, I, this is a real story. I, I In my dream, I found a box in the attic that had a title belt in it, okay? And the title belt was from a promotion that was supposed to be in L.A. around, like, the late 20s, early 30s, Okay? that never got off the ground. They only had one show. I don't know how the hell I remember all this, but <laughs> the belt had real diamonds all around the face plate. Okay. And drop in diamond, diamonds are forever the here. Diamond John. Workers, uh -huh, uh -huh. The diamond workers who died getting the diamonds for that belt cursed the belt. Okay. <laughs> and everyone who owned the house <laughs> had this curse because they were in possession of the belt. And then I woke up. I'm telling you the truth. That really happened this morning. That was an episode of Dark Side of the Ring from two seasons ago. <laughs> you, dude, that, John, that was clever because that was, that the, I'm just, I'm picturing right now the dark, <laughs> dark, shadowy, cigar smoke, fat, balding, white promoter in the background. And then they're just showing these shadowy figures yeah. of children, children just mining for diamonds. And oh man, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and then you have you have Dave Meltzer who's given a bunch of yeah, um, huh? and uh, uh, well, uh, you know, and then you have Cornette all of a sudden just starts cutting a hateful promo on Vince Russo just right in the middle of it, you know, about how he didn't really book the screw job. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then Jericho, <laughs> and then Chris Jericho's on there's the authority about the whole situation. Yes, 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 yes yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And because and because not only is he given like you know sort of given the 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 voice of reason, but because he's the disembodied narrator, also he's like, and so the children that mine for the blood diamonds. So do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. to, to oh, say, oh, perfect, absolutely perfect, unbelievable. Give us um, the book. Look, Look, I want to. I, I know we we. I say a lot of negative things on here, and I and I bury a lot of people all the time. So I want to say something positive real quick. Something good did happen today. So I'm, I'm at the house, and I'm dealing with the local municipality to come and do a, a bulky item pickup. Okay, and I've got stuff. I, I put stuff out on the curb. You know, I already have the the tickets already already put in for them to come and get it tomorrow morning. Right. The second that I put these items on the on the out by the curb and I'm walking back up the driveway this old woman comes up in a pickup and slows down in front of the house right and I could tell she had a bunch of metal in the back of the truck right 
So I say to her, I go, hey, are you looking for metal? And she said, yeah. So I go, okay, come on, come on over here and we can go through this, this junk pile, right? And then Dude, you started playing, and then you started playing Wasp again. Dude, this, woman, <laughs> this woman was about four foot ten. Okay. She was about 70 years old. She was total beast mode, dude. This woman was picking up um, wrought iron plumbing that we, old cast iron plumbing that we had under the house, pieces of it, and throwing it in the back of the truck like like hay bales. It was remarkable. Now, I, I had to put I had to put the old hot water heater in because she was so tiny, but <laughs> I've never seen a woman that age, that small, just in total beast mode with metal. It was unbelievable. <laughs> that's, that's funny that you say that because um allison and i went for a walk like two three weeks ago and it was bulk day was the next day and uh we allison was like i just want to go look around i just want to go on a walk and look around and see what people are setting out just to like see what people have just to like be nosy and so we go on this walk and all of a sudden this dude there's um a dad and a daughter is in another truck behind him and they're just whipping around up around uh the elementary school and they like block the entire street off, roll out to get to pick through all these people's um, bulk items that they had sitting out. Just no shame in their game. But match a big props to them for not having any shame in their game and just getting out there and getting after it. Dude, that, well, that listen, woman was she was so appreciative, dude. I mean, well, I mean, and that's, all that stuff. yeah, and that's just it is that like what I love about bulk time. And when you say that, John, is that like. Here's the deal is that when any, any kind of, any kind of picker, be it for scrap or be it for whatever, like they're awesome because they're doing all of us a solid, like yeah. whatever, whatever good they get from it, man, be it, I'm just going to scrap it. I'm going to, you know, break it down and use it for parts or I'm going to, you know, whatever I'm going to refurbish it and be it dude. The fact that that stuff gets off of my property and into your world, God bless you all. So big yep. ups to all the, I had big a, ups I had to all the pickers, guy, man. A junk guy came out yesterday to give me a quote on that whole pile. And he told me five seventy five. <laughs> And that woman came today and took 60% of it. And she was so appreciative that I just let right. her take. Yeah. Thank God. She saved me a ton of money. That's yeah, awesome. Bless the child, man. Bless 45. Child. It's all coming true here. It right is before our very it. eyes. Look at we us. We got it. Speaking of all us, right, John. So I was just going to say, want, we, we got stuff to do. We do. People, we got a, people to talk about. Shows we got a lot about. to talk about. So uh, t how about, uh, uh, well, take it, take it away, Mongoose. Let's hear about your, uh, your raw report. You were at raw this uh, Monday. Well, do you, do you want me to go first? Cause mine was on Sunday or do you want him to go first? You know what? It makes more sense to do Andretti first. Um, chronologically and not only that because we can parlay mine into the um preview for uh absolutely um, yeah night of champions absolutely I, I that makes got, more I sense i don't got a lot i don't got a lot i, I basically you know I, I know you guys you guys watch the um mongoose i know you watch the show uh baker did you catch did you were you able to catch any of that no wrestling is still on timeout for me so i'm uh, as your as your, lo as your lovely timeout. as your lovely host of a wrestling podcast uh i'm on a wrestling wrestling is on timeout for me right now look man i put i put wwe on timeout for what six weeks and, and i and it was great because when i when i jump back into it i appreciate it again and i liked it yeah well you went so you went to the long beach show I did. And I, I saw I did see some stuff from that. And it was mainly from what kind of happened with that big reveal of who showed up. So but I'll, I'll let you take it away. Well, first, first of all, you know, those tickets were not expensive. I only paid like 40 or 45 dollars for that ticket. And I was flying solo because I, you know, I, I, I politely asked my wife whether or not she wanted to go. I knew she was going to say no. I was kind of glad she didn't go because, look, man, she doesn't know anything, especially about about <laughs> Japanese wrestling. And I didn't want to listen to her ask me all night, how much does that guy weigh? Like she like a married mm -hmm. Art Donovan, right? So well, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I was hoping that she would go full Art Donovan and just <laughs> ask you how much that guy weighed. So she she declined the invitation, uh, which was to everybody's everybody's benefit. But um, I went to this place in Bixby Knowles, which is right outside of Long Beach called uh, Thunderbolt Pizza. And that place was unbelievable, dude. So if you're ever down there, the sauce is great. 
They got they got all the flat iron seasonings right there on the table for you. It's a it's a it's a professional operation down there at that place. So if you're ever down that way, c- catch uh, catch yourself some uh, Thunderbolt pizza for sure. So I wanted to put them over real quick. What's the uh, what's the crust like? Crispy? It's it's like more of a uh, classical Italian kind of pizza, like a Neapolitan. Okay. Okay. But it was great, dude. The pepperoni was great. The sauce was sweet. Uh, really, really great. Even with, I, and I put some of that, uh, the flat, the flat iron seasoning is really good. So if you're, if you're a seasoning person that does like grilling, things like that, all those flat iron seasonings are really good. So those are, those are worth checking out. So I tried, I tried all of them on, on a, a different slice of that pizza. And that was, I was really impressed with, with the flavoring of, of all of that. So great, great, great experience for sure. Nice. Nice. So then I went to the Long Beach Pyramid. Now, I, I had been to Long Beach State, you know, the, the college, multiple times. But I had never been inside the pyramid. Um, and they had renovated it pretty recently. Now, that's where Long Beach State plays basketball and volleyball and all their indoor stuff, right? So, dude, what what a venue, first of all. What a great venue that really was. Because they, they've got, like, an intermediate amount of seating. It's not too big. It's not too small. And I really like when you go into an arena and all the seating is below you. Like it's built like down below, right? Yeah, I, I, I always love that for some reason. So if that's how it is there, and they've got they've got all the aisles in the right places where if you end up having to sit in the middle of the aisle, you're only crawling over like three people to get to an aisle. There's not like there's not like rows. There's not like sections of twenty seats where if you sit in the middle, you got to climb over ten people each way to get to the aisle. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. ideal. It was so awesome, dude, because I, I got a seat that was right on the edge. There was nobody in front of me. There was no seat in front of me. So I was able to stretch out and I and I, I had an unbelievable seat. I was on the corner of the ring, pretty close to the ring, right by the entrance way. And man, that crowd got hot quick, dude. Everybody had a had a blast. The card was unbelievable. Um, every match was awesome the whole way through. I mean, that, that was definitely a top five live event that I had ever been to from as a wrestling fan. I, I really, I'm so glad that I didn't just wuss out and not go to that show and, and actually, you know, got off my ass and went down there and did it. And, you know, it had a great experience down there, man. Cause that was a, they put on a heck of a show, man. They really did. Everybody was awesome the whole way through it. And I, I really, I, I can't say enough good things about that venue or about that, or about that experience in general with new Japan. That was, uh, there's, there's no chance I'll miss them ever again when they come back to Long Beach. There's no chance. Here's a quick question for you, Andretti. Did you see the uh, Walter pyramid show? with the uh young bucks versus the golden lovers have you ever no, seen that i, I show? may have seen it you might have sent me stuff in the past you know about that but i don't think right. I've, i don't think i've ever seen it my only complaint so you being there ha- helped uh, a lot you know just as far as like you were able to say who's getting reactions and everything else my big complaint in watching that show versus watching the show that i just said about before uh i wish i could remember what they had that titled um oh but that, it was i i remember i remember that show i just it, remember I, watching it, 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 had, it had dude it had a tagline that like i thought that i would never forget and i did uh, you know i'm just blanking now but <laughs> the, my only problem here with this one andretti and i know that you saw did, did you go back and watch it on new japan world at all i, ha- I have not I, I, okay I, I try it's, not to do that anymore because when I go back and watch it, I feel like it it might take away from the experience I had. Yeah, a, yeah I understand. Yep, I understand. And so my complaint of it was that that Bucks versus Lover show, the production on it was so good. Like, and because access was there. So what I'm saying is that the way that it was shot, you could see yeah. the crowd, but it didn't look as it it didn't look as i don't want to say bush league but like th- there was b b level production on this show meaning that like it wasn't in the best um the camera wasn't the best in terms of like clarity the sound was okay um in the beginning whenever it was sparsely filled it looked very sparsely filled like uh, you know, there it almost like it was not a TV production. Do you know what I mean? Now it, them, but, that was mainly the prelims, right? Well, it was, but then once the show actually started, it felt like it felt like I was watching a best of super junior show in that 
you, so New Japan, the way that they film wrestling, obviously they film the wrestlers. So there isn't a hard camera that, you know, that, that like you go back to and everything. However, um, whenever they have like their dominion, like their bigger type shows, it's, you know, it's crystal clear and mm -hmm. the, 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 the director is calling all the shots and everything looks great. And they certainly had, I would assume, you know, maybe three or four cameras there. And it, it, it felt like B level production watching it. That's my only complaint of the whole show I, is that like, I wish that because access, obviously because access being a television channel in the States, there was much more for them to work with for that show than it seemed it seemed anyways than this one um i've only ever re-watched the bucks and golden lovers match from that show but i would like to go back and sort of see and then do a little compare and contrast to see like what the differences were and how different the building looked because honestly watching from home the venue looked different than it did for that um for that show with the uh, Bucks versus the Lovers. You, what was what, that one called, year, John? How long it ago was, was that? It was um, 2000... It was 2018, right? 2018, yeah, 2018, uh, March now, 25th. They, it's they called, made, it was Strong they Style Ball. Strong Style they Ball, thank you. That place oh, okay, 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 they that's have, interesting. They may have renovated since then. I'm not sure. Yeah, Strong Style gonna, Ball, that was it. Yeah, but I was going to say... I'm, yeah, I was going to say, I definitely, definitely can tell that the, it's definitely renovated from the last time I saw it because the way that they shot that uh, the Golden Lovers Young Bucks match, it felt like they were shooting up into the pyramid a lot more. So it looked like it was a huge venue, or at least it felt like it. it well, like and it I think a, that I think that that's a production thing, though. Yeah. I don't even know if that's a renovation as much as it was you having American TV crews on an American television channel that were broadcasting to an american audience because Agreed. if you watch if you watch any which andretti has watched a bunch of them you know you watch any of these like best of super juniors or um new japan cup or world tag league any of those shows when they're going to like essentially you know what looks like high school gyms it looks like high school gyms do you know what i mean yeah yeah we'll do for and, that for that a lot of of that fan fantastic mania like i was saying to you before a lot of those shows there were 200 people in the crowd it yeah. seemed like yeah 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 and that's the one thing with new japan is, is that they're not good about masking that you know what i mean or, or or making it seem like it's it's any different that being said though they shoot wrestling better than anybody um and and, and so uh, so uh let's go into the card here really quick here andretti um, because I would like just a little bit of back and forth, if you wouldn't mind. Um, so go ahead, buddy. What do you, what do you, what was your favorite match? I don't know if I had a favorite match, but I, I just, everybody came to work, dude. Everybody came to work was the number one takeaway is that everybody's effort was just fantastic from, from start to finish, even in the prelims, the, the yeah. effort and the energy was so good man and you can feel it. it you can feel it in any arena man when every when the people in the ring are are on their game and they, and they want to do a really good job and all those women's matches all three of those women's matches all four i mean all all four of those women were unbelievable the whole night in in, in all three matches it was you know obviously it's really unfortunate about you know uh about monet with her with either i don't know if it's her foot or her ankle but it's really unfortunate but um Nightingale handled that so well, dude. And I, I don't know if, if you guys got to see the speech that she gave at the end, but she yeah. gave a really, really nice speech and about what it means to her. And it it really came off like she was the one that was supposed to win that belt. So she yeah, she was flying in the ring and, and gave an unbelievable speech. Like she is so talented, man. That 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 woman is is a breath of fresh air, man. And I know I say that to you guys all the time. Every time she comes to the ring, she's a breath of fresh air, man. And she she just is strong as hell. And she's in there throwing people around. She sells her ass off. She was selling her ass off for 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 two women that are way smaller than her, you know, in those in those two matches. I mean, and I know I told you guys before, I I, I haven't watched too much CMLL in the last like month or so, but Stephanie Vacare, dude. Is is a woman that's in that promotion that I know I've told you guys about before that that I don't understand why she's not in the WWE or not in the WWE. 
Dude, she, you, she just yeah. came to work, man. She was up. Yeah. I, I was just going to say is that, um, so here was the thing is that I never saw Stephanie Vicare. I never saw Momo Kogo. Um, and to me, and the reason I asked you your favorite match uh, or what you thought was the best or whatever is that um, I was absolutely blown away with all three of the women's matches. Um, the, the, obviously the main event went completely sideways, but until Monet fell off of the ropes. Um, that Monet and Vicare match, I was like, okay, this is excellent. And I don't think it was as good as Willow and Momo Kogo was. I mean, dude, those, and, and, might, and, those might be the top three women's matches I've seen this whole year. Yeah, I mean that well here the the thing is with this year we we do have we do have Monet and um or Monet and uh uh Oh, my girl, the pirate girl, help me. Tyree Sane. Tyree Sane. Awesome. That, that, and that was, that, that was, and that was awesome. There, I mean, there, um, there's, there's a couple that are, that are included in that too. We don't even need to get into it. But there, this, this year so far, these five months have, have been my favorite five months of excellent women's matches that I can, that I can, I can talk about. It's been, it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, so that's the heartbreaking thing about the, the situation. So, um, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what I saw on TV, but I would like to get your actual in the arena opinion or, you know, commentary here. Um, so whenever I was watching the main event, I uh, I was watching it not live uh, because I did not see the last two matches live, but I watched it the next morning. Um, and Manet and Willow, first off, they're doing the deal where like it, it can get old. If you do like the, oh my gosh, look at the crowd showering us with adoration. But I actually thought that it was perfect for that, for the situation, for that match. And especially because Willow Nightingale was there because that made it feel even more authentic to me, like Sasha crying and freaking out with Bianca was really real because it was the first like true singles main event for a WrestleMania. Do you know what I'm saying? And so that that i she's sasha's been in a biggest uh, bigger stage but for nightingale to be there and like to keep trying to live it up like i actually totally empathize with that like when you got a spot to be like oh my gosh like i don't know if i'm gonna get here again give it to me i thought that that was great um so um manet goes up onto the ropes and absolutely it looks like we're getting set up for you know some sort of like power bomb uh, destroy you know what i'm saying something along those lines and when she jumped off the ropes to me it just looked like oh she was gonna lose her footing and bailed and was legit just trying to catch willow to give her like a like yeah snap mare or whatever off the top and um i didn't even know she was hurt i had no idea and so I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, well, where's she at? I thought she was like underneath the ropes, like either A, gigging <laughs> or B, like getting like a weapon or something that would come into play later. Um, and so then she rolls back in there and uh, again, dude, broken, whatever it was, I didn't know she was hurt. I can't stop saying that because she's that much of a warrior and then gets uh, picked up and, you know, gut wrenched into the doctor bomb. And then that poor referee, man, once he didn't count, I was like, uh oh, she's hurt. And I, I actually texted Andretti on the side in case uh, you were watching it, John. Um, and I was like, did Willow kill Sasha with the, the doctor bomb? Like, is that what happened? Did she just break all of her ribs and back? Yeah. And, and you know, because that's what I was like, oh, she was supposed to kick out and didn't. And then she freaking picks her up and she gives another one. And, you know, Sasha eats the pin. And so it's like, okay, obviously that's not what was supposed to happen here. As Andretti said, her selling Willow, selling that as if she, you know, was as shocked as all of us was great. But Andretti, could you give me, so that was my television perspective. Can you take the audience here through your la the last like four minutes of that match? Tell us what, tell us what it was like to, to be live in the arena, brother. 
it was great. The the match was excellent. It, they they really were were pushing that whole match as though Willow could really win it. Because look, man, everybody thought Mercedes Monet was going to win that match. Everybody thought that, right? Well, and and full dis- full disclosure from everything that I've seen, read, and heard, that belt was created for Monet to win. And look, we, like, can debate, <laughs> we can debate that as much as we want, and I don't even want to get into that right now. We'll we'll talk about that some other time. But you know, it, it, her slipping off the rope. It looked like a, a professional slipping off the rope. Yeah, it yes, like, yeah, it looked, right. like, it looked yes. like she slipped. She did slip, but it looked like it was so well covered up that it was kind of like, "Holy cow, that woman's really good at what she does." That's mm-hmm. what it looked like, right? Well, then when she pulled her in, I, I mean, nobody knew. No, none of nobody in the arena knew she was hurt. You know, no, it just looked like a like a, a really nice cover up of a of a you know a slip, right? So then she power bombs her, and that power bomb was pretty rough. It, it was powerful. Let's put it that way. It was not not rough in that not rough in the sense that it was unsafe. I mean, rough in the sense that it looked powerful, right? And I thought she knocked her out, dude. I thought mm-hmm. when when that ref did you know did the did the botch on the on the pinfall, I thought that did Nightingale had knocked her out. And then well, they, and, and cre- credit to the announce team that one of them I don't remember which one it was, literally said that then he named the referee and he said he has a better view than everybody. So we got to go with his call. That's great. Who said that, Riccoboni? No, it wasn't Rick. You know what? It was the color guy. Okay. Uh, and I don't remember who the color guy was because uh, was it Kozlov? Yes, I think it was. Co- yeah, because the commentary says here Kozlov, Riccoboni, and Veda Scott. Yeah, that, that then it was caught. Co- then you know what? Kozlov, give Kozlov a, a bonus because what a, what a that, maneuver! What a maneuver for Kozlov, dude. dude That's the, he literally, he literally, he said he literally goes. And because that's why I like I whenever I texted you about he killed her or she killed her, I was like, man, you know, that was that's as good as you could do it because he literally said, oh, you know what? If so and so has a better view than any of us. We got to go with the call. And, and then she, I was like, oh, man, that's, she picked that's her up a good again. call on the fly. She picked she picked her up again and gave her the second one. The second one was a little was a little softer. And when they, when they called the pin. I was like, I I wonder if if Nightingale was still supposed to win that match, but but Monet got hurt on the on the first on the first power bomb. Mm-hmm. I thought I I honestly thought she knocked her out on that first power bomb, and then and then she just you know for whatever reason they were like oh shit what do we do? And then you know there it, just in my head it felt like maybe Nightingale really was supposed to win that match, you know. But then obviously in in the days since then it's kind of come out that they had to go with the. Uh, they had to they had to go with the audible, but look, man, that's what Triple H has always said. How many times has he said that in press in press uh, press calls and things like that, where it's like, dude, don't do not put somebody in a title match unless you're comfortable with them being a champ, right? And I mean, even in NXT, how many times? Like, I think that's how Alistair Black won the belt. Isn't that how Andrade won the belt? Right? When uh, I, didn't McIntyre get hurt in a match and they put the belt on Andrade? I think I want to say yeah, but I can't remember. I don't so so McIntyre McIntyre tore a bicep or something like that, but I feel like he was getting called up anyways. But yeah, the thing that's about, what I. But, but the thing about it is though, is that the fact that you said that Andretti is making my wheels turn a little bit because Andretti or Andretti Andrade was by no means being groomed to be the next champion. That was what was really good about that 1.0 NXT was that I that I really liked how old school it was in that they groomed the next person. You know what I mean? Like we yes. know who your next champion is going to be. And um, so I, you might actually be right there, young Justin. You might be because he definitely missed time afterwards, Drew did before being out of there. But I don't really particularly recall. I remember Triple H saying that one time in, in particular. And then right after that, they had Lars Sullivan in that main event of a takeover. <laughs> and I was like, dude, that guy could be the champ. If this, if this, I, I forget who he was even in there with, but whoever he was in there with, if that guy would have broke his ankle or slipped or whatever, or in, in tore his bicep or whatever, Lars Sullivan's your champion. It was I, Paris, I, I guess I never, well, it, I never, I never thought went, of it like that. Honestly, yeah. I never would have thought that. Well, and the, and the thing is with Lars is it wouldn't have been a problem as long as he didn't have uh, 
you know, uh, game pornography while also um, destroying the gay lifestyle in internet chat forums or chat forums for years and years. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, there was people just, just get in their own way, man. I mean, that just, just, just get <laughs> yeah. in their own way. It's all it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, yeah. I, I really, I, I really hope that Tony Khan and, and even, even the, you know, the New Japan guys are smart enough to, to see that Willow Nightingale really is something special. And I hope that people go in with her, let her have a long title reign with that belt, you know, push her in AEW. I'm telling you, man, people really like her. They, they, they love her. She's, she feels really accessible and she's got a lot of, a lot of great positive energy and people, people gravitate to her, man. And when she, you know, she came out and everybody blew the roof off, dude. And it was, it was just, it's, it was a really special moment to see somebody you know, win a big a match against a WWE Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, who's who's wrestled now all over the world and, and won, you know, championships in big promotions and things like that. And to see her get that marquee win and have her crying in the ring and so appreciative. I mean, like, that's what you want to see, man. And that, that was a special moment. Yeah, and I think that they really, they really have to look at Willow in a different light now because, like, even at that Ring of Honor show when we were out at WrestleMania, like the roof can't kind of like there was a good pop for Willow and she was on the pre show. Like some Willow, there's something to Willow. I, I don't, and she's just super likable, high energy. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for rocket strap and Willow now. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, and this is where I, I can come in for my um, weekly, uh, plug for my my main my main homeboy diggity dave um where he he has said and and you know i'll I tell you man for for all the the internet hate that mr Meltzer gets for being in the back pocket of you know tk and the bucks and blah 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 the dude has said for and i'm pro- i'd be willing to bet four months now uh why are we not doing anything with willow nightingale And, um, and his point is, is a valid one in that he would always say certain wrestlers only have this, uh, window of time to where the fans are behind them. And if you don't go with them, then they're dead. A good example of this would be, um, the acclaimed. If AEW did not run with the acclaimed and put those belts in the acclaimed, they would have really missed something. Now, I also think that they kind of snuffed out their fire too fast, which is a mm-hmm. story for another time. But, um, you know, Willow was one of those people. Jamie Hayter is the same way, dude. Jamie Hayter, I feel like, was never supposed to be the women's champion. Uh-huh. And people were getting behind her. And so you go with it. And the thing was with Willow was that, look, man, you don't need to put the belt on her right now. But she also didn't lo- need to lose every single match she was in, which is what was happening. And the fact that they accidentally got her to beat Sasha freaking Banks, like if things don't happen with her, then that's that's a really big black eye, I think, for for TK because you you literally you know backed into the best case scenario here. So mm-hmm. do something with it, man. Who, who bigger could she have beaten? Who, who you know right. what I mean? that's what i'm saying what, yeah you're she, absolutely right fabulous moolah you want her to beat moolah like what right like, who you, right, who, right. Who, no who you're absolutely you right i guess like you got to look at that and you got to be like okay that she just beat arguably the top women's wrestler in the world and it's time that we push her and she is going to be a real part of this new show coming up or whatever you want to do yeah no you're absolutely right man but look, uh, other, other than other than that like you know it, it was that was the first time i'd ever seen Okada alive. And look, man, that dude, just everything about him screams superstar. He, he, he just, he's just got the energy. Uh, it, it just, you could feel the energy of Okada, like with him being the, the top guy in the ring. Right. And they did a really nice job kind of setting up him and Umino, right. They're, they're planting the seeds about that. They're planting the seeds about him and Moxley. That match was great in the sense that you could see that we're moving and we're, we've got future plans is, is kind of what I saw happening in that match. Uh, between those guys so that that was really that was really fun to watch that my yeah for me uh that was not the best match on the show that was my favorite match on the show that was because it was 
almost party match ish because there was it was high spot high spot this that and the other thing um but as you said we have real storyline advancement here. dude all of my money is in my hands for uh new japan to take or whomever is booking it um for uh moxley and okada to me that that scream moxley okada at uh forbidden door i yeah. I, I don't know i don't know but like it just it makes sense you know like Let's do it yeah that dude that's a main event anywhere in the world so why not put that on one of your you know marquee shows uh, that you have of the year and the best part about it being on forbidden door is that if it is no matter who the victor is there's always a built-in rematch and so mm-hmm. if you want to go 50 50 you know whatever like i so yeah i thought that i thought that that match was awesome yeah, everybody yeah. was great, man. I mean, everybody came to work. I loved that show. It was such a blast to go down there, man. If anybody has a chance to to check out a, a wrestling event at that venue, it's like I said, it's not too big, it's not too small. You've got a you've got a real kind of intermediate level, great environment. It's just a, it's a blast, and I I can't wait to go again, man. I can't wait. Yeah, that's awesome. Glad you had a nice time. We also uh, we all had double duty. Then we uh, the following night. We have Mongoose. He uh, he headed to Chocolate Ten. I went did. To, uh, went to Monday Night Raw. I did. So I took the six and a half hour drive to Hershey, Pennsylvania, <laughs> and I uh, I I tell you what. On <laughs> <laughs> and so I, t- I, t- I tell you what, man, Bill. I I live in parts unknown, so you know. Um, but I'll tell you what, that that was sold out ahead of time. Eight thousand nine hundred people. Uh, there, all 8,900 people were there. It was packed to the brim. Um, here was my, uh, here was my thing is that I had a lot of fun because I was there with a good friend of the pod ski, old trigger tray. And, um, so we had fun. I was very disappointed that the show was such a show. It was so, <laughs> dude, it was so show and um i like we were driving in and i'm pumping trigger up because i'm like brother we're going to saudi arabia saturday like they are flying the production trucks out of here on tuesday they've already taped smackdown like this is gonna we are gonna get bells whistles you know everything else and um so a couple of things that i have to say is first um bronson reed was hugely over live and Bronson Reed versus Ricochet is the only match that on the entire three and a half hours that got a this is awesome chant and so I'm hopeful that because Paul's back in charge uh and that they snookered him away from New Japan that that means big things for Bronson Reed I don't know if that's going to be Gunther I don't know if that's going to be a U.S. title uh, but we need this guy in a mid-card belt scene ASAP. By no means should he be touching a world title right now. I don't think he's close to it. But Gunther's had the the IC belt for long enough. You know what I'm saying? If we want to get a transition baby face or something and then have Bronson go, uh, or you know, if they do anything US, well, I guess they can't do US wise because we had a draft in between. Um, so yeah, I got Bronson Reed as my next intercontinental champion is where I'm at man, there. I hope, I hope so, man. I really I, dude, the crowd loved him. Crowd loved him over huge, looked great. That his match with Ricochet, um, it was the third best match in the card. And it's only because Finn and Shinsuke were great. They were great. Both of them came for a TV match, especially. They both they both worked insane. The crowd was into it. It was awesome. Um, and the only reason that uh, you know that, it, that they were overshadowed both of them is that for a TV main event, that six man was freaking awesome, man. I was I was very happy that I got to see that six man for the main event because it was one of those just you know twelve minute or whatever. High spot, high spot, near fall, near fall, you know, baby face in peril, catches the hot tag, here we go. And then we had the happy ending finish at the end. Um, so I, I really did like the main event. I thought the main event was great. Um, my two big complaints were, uh, first off, it was great to see Brock Lesnar 
Okay, I have not seen Brock Lesnar live since Andretti and I were at King of the Ring 2002 whenever he won that thing. Um, so that was good. Uh, but I was very – look, man, it's this is WWE's fault is that they put so much into their, their superstar entrances and whatnot. I saw Cody, but I didn't get a chance to see Cody come out and get oh. the pyro and go – you know what I mean? Like, oh, so no. because my only Cody thing was him running out for the open challenge and it wasn't a real entrance. It was him just being, you know, injured and running out. And then they teased Seth Rollins all night. And then the crowd was insanely stoked for it. And they were playing a Seth Rollins video on the TV. And I thought that it was just a pre-tape that was being run during a commercial. So I'm not, dude, I'm, 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 I'm taking pee break. I'm eating a soft pretzel. I'm doing everything. And apparently that was my Seth Rollins for the night. Uh, so, you know, that, that, that was pretty, you know, I didn't like that because I, I really wanted a chance to be able to see him on. He was so over whenever we went to the house show that I couldn't wait to see him with a, 9,000 people singing his song and screaming for him. And I didn't get a chance to do that. And so, you know, that was a thumbs down. But other than that, overall, great experience, very mediocre show. However, and this sort of uh, leads me into the thing for the, the, you know, the Saudi show. What doesn't it really seem like the way that Cody Rhodes has been booked since wrestlemania that he was supposed to win the championship yes like doesn't it really really seem that way like we're doing a cody has a broken arm how's he gonna win this match angle but like him and brock don't have belts the winner doesn't get a title shot like i feel like this was all pre-booked with cody being the champion which would have been much better booking I mean, and you so you don't always have to have a, a title stakes to have a b- big match between two top rated singles guys. You, know you I mean? don't know. You know, no, you Brock, don't. Brock but, doesn't. Brock doesn't need a belt. Well, but here's the thing is that you don't. But like there are no real stakes here other than like Cody just being a man. Well, I think we're buying time, right? We're just trying to buy time until we get the Mania or SummerSlam. Yeah, it, but isn't isn't that terrible? Like, like my point is that like, so Roman is fighting for the tag team championships. So doesn't that seem like what Roman was going to do whenever he didn't have the world title anymore? But we, I, I think, I think I, we want to get that thousand day reign. I think it's really well, well, well. Somebody decided that that was what was most important, and that's that's seriously like I don't know. If like, I, I don't know if no, I but th- that's what's souring it for me is that like yeah. I feel like I feel like you are you you are really he doesn't wrestle anymore, and now he's getting a thousand day reign by being in a tag match. Like screw you, bro. You're not the world champion. This is going to be two pay per views that you've. Uh, wrestled on or either wrestled on or didn't and you're getting a thousand days like yo man like i i i i think that romans i i don't he's not a geek because he's booked so strong but like th- this feels like smarmy and weird and i don't like it i i honestly feel like they're doing the same plan that they were going to do except they decided to keep the belt on roman and not cody the the old man was not going to let someone come in whether or not he loves that person or not come in from another company where he could not win their title and win his undisputed title and that very well could be it that absolutely could be it going to be the undisputed champion now whether or not that's at SummerSlam or mania or royal rumble or whatever it ends up going to be going to be they're going to make they're going to make the fans see him as someone who has earned this this uh, anointment that's but here's it, the thing but dude they accidentally got that by him blowing out his pack and so yeah. then he came the whole way back and here's my, my the thing that's so weird about this is that roman is in a world tag team championship match because to me like if i'm booking back if i'm you know booking from the end point and then going backwards and then where do we go from here the backwards booking is cody wins how does he get there he comes back from his torn pack. He wins the Royal Rumble. 
He goes through all this, yada, yada. He wins the match. So now what do we do with Roman? Oh, well, we have dissension starting in the bloodline. So let's have the, the Usos F everything up. And so Roman and um, Solo have to go and try to clean it up for them. Now that maybe... Kinda, that kind of seems a little weird for me with Roman and Solo. I, I, I totally get with what you're saying, Andretti, about how they're buying time, which I totally understand that, and I totally think that's what they're doing. But it's weird how they're going about it with what you're saying is that like Roman and solo have to come in and clean it up. But like the whole deal leading up to WrestleMania was whether or not it, are the Usos, like, are they in the bloodline or not? Are they ride or die? Yeah. And then they were full ride or die. And now there's like dissension again. So like Saturday, you're going to get a pivotal moment between Reigns and Sokoa. I totally believe that. See, I don't. I actually think it's going to be between one of the Usos and Reigns. Well, I think, well, I think they're going to they're going to yeah. cost them the belt. Is what I think is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 and and the, here's the other thing, man. So, if your slow build is for Roman and Sokoa at Mania, then then you 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 John Beep, you fucked up. Yeah. Not putting the belt on Cody Rhodes. You did yeah. plenty of time. He, but dude, a thousand days doesn't matter. Like it doesn't it does, matter. It does matter. To it, to nobody. It matters it, to the it matters to branding and to and to TV people and to advertisers and sponsors. I I, I look, would say I would he say is the, look at, he is the greatest champion since Hogan. That's how he's booking this guy. Right, but here's the thing: you are, but th that's like them saying that Chandler Bing is the greatest comedian ever. It's yeah. fake. <laughs> it's fake. That's it, dude. It's it's all fake, man. And so you, Roman, still could have could be a, a prominent role. And now you have Cody Rhodes that's going to be on your show every week. Well, if you're selling, dude, if you're selling a television show, a weekly television show to somebody, and you say that Roman Reigns will be on now once every three weeks versus you here's this guy that this is how he's moved numbers since we've signed him and he will be there every single week either wrestling or doing promos or whatever i'm going with cody rhodes like you're, I, you're missing I, you're missing the t-shirt sales roman dude hulk hogan graphics. still hulk hogan still sells more shirts than matt riddle and so Roman's is Hopefully. Roman is established. Roman's established, man. He's not going to not sell T-shirts, dude. I, I think the, in their minds, in their, in their minds, this thousand day thing is a is a, a benchmark that they have to set. I think it's I, I think it's the, I think it's the old man. I think it's the old man's mind because I think I that it's I foolish don't know thinking. If it is. I don't know if it totally is, man. Because look at what they're doing with Bianca Belair too. They're trying to establish these people as the greatest so that they have a better benchmark going forward because the company right now is very different than what it was in the San Martino era or the or the um uh, uh the uh the Hogan era right versus versus what it is right now they're trying to create precedent for who do we measure people going forward against because you're not comparing let's say let's say that 3 years from now Damian Priest is in the main event picture okay you're not comparing Damian Priest to um, Bruno San Martino and Pedro Morales. You're going to compare him to Roman Reigns. You're not comparing mm -hmm. him to Hogan, right? Because that Hogan era was so long ago now that people it, it aren't really super familiar with the the Hogan 80s run anymore unless they're, unless they're our age, right? Our age or, or, or older, right? But for the newer fans, you want to have some kind of a precedent in place for people to compare future champions to somebody does that make sense i think yeah. i do no i i do so i do understand to, but, to the, set that. but the so the rebuttal to the argument would be first that they're doing it all at the same time with everybody right. so you have roman is a thousand days bianca has the longest modern era woman's title Gunther is the longest modern era running intercontinental champion. The Usos until they lost were the longest run. Like, do you know, so like all at the same time, that that's another thing where it's just like, 
that's it's so WWE. But, Do you know what I mean? Well, like because they, dude, they, they, but they, but they are they are so good at going over the top, like of taking a good idea and just going over the top with They're it. Do you know what I mean? Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. making more money right now than they ever have. This you, is a this is a huge era, and they want to be able to look back on this era as the biggest era we've ever had. You you are correct, but here's two things though. The first one is that they're making more money because of the storylines that are there. And the first one is Roman specifically. There was a lot of drawing power in the last couple of months with people that were going to beat Roman and nobody did. But none and of you're those... going, you, you're going to start getting diminishing returns, man is people it, is that no more people aren't watching raw. Now, now there's a lot of heavy sports competition, stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. But there's not more people watching Raw and SmackDown now than there were in February. And so if we go into the summer and these numbers don't bump, that is a demonstrative diminishing return in what they've decided to go with, which is thousand days, blah, 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 blah. Because the thing is, is it only makes sense if you have good child, excuse me, challengers, if your challengers are credible. And when there's none left, then what are we doing? And all if those, we're building if- those people who got themselves over, like Sami Zayn, even Kevin Owens is, is really prominent right now. Those people are Luke Longley and Bill Weddington getting rebounds on the court for Michael Jordan, is what it is. They're still part of, of a, an unbelievable team, a, even a dynasty, but this is Michael Jordan's basketball team. He is the face of the franchise. Those guys have a place in what we do, but they are role players in this story of the bloodline that we are presenting as the biggest thing that's going to happen in this era. That's the way my, I looked at it. That my and my counter argument though is is that uh, Roman, like without Roman being there, then but there's no Michael. Like he's there in in theory. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like he's, but he's, he's not there, man. Like he, and so if he's not going to be there, this is literally the same as if the attitude era with Vince versus Steve Austin, the only reason that that worked is because every week Vince came up with a plan and it would take a month for Austin to find a way out and he'd foil it. And week by week, Vince came up with a new stipulation or he signed a new guy or he did whatever. And then every week you'd see Steve Austin slowly outsmart him. And then here's Vince and, uh, you know, Jerry Briscoe, Pratt falling in the ring, you know, getting sprayed with beer and whatever else. And um, I feel like without Roman ever being there, it's different because there, this is a content driven business. And. I don't see people, people were buying tickets for Sami Zayn. People were buying tickets for Cody Rhodes. People buy tickets for John Cena. Accidental people success. People don't buy tickets for Roman Reigns, though. They, do, if you would have seen how many shirts there were at, at WrestleMania. They're buying would... for Roman. Yeah. No, but they're, the buying, they're, buying his, they're... they're buying his shirt. But I'm, but I'm saying like Gates, if you look at house show Gates, things like that, like and that Roman ain't working house shows. Like no, that's a, that's another part of it, man. I think I think that the other part of it too is that people aren't as smart as what we always are. So like, if you're just saying, you know, some Joe Schmo wants to take his kid to a show because he watches SmackDown every week, and so he goes and buys a ticket, and they go to the show, they're not always in the know as much as what we are. So they don't know that Roman's not working house shows and then you know roman doesn't come out or whatever but you know we still got to see uh the usos and and sammy and kevin so i think that's kind of what kind of helps save them a little bit is that now, not everybody is counterpoint to that though is that i went to i couldn't tell you how many shows at the war memorial and i always knew that i wasn't going to get like the champion um now the reason that i went is because i wanted to see the other people but my point is is that um that you don't you whenever whenever i was going to those early house shows especially um when as like hulk hogan had the championship and so he was only working two pay-per-views or whatever yeah. um 
but now like i i don't know man i just i think that in in a tv driven business and when you have people that you've built up to be this hot especially somebody that's an actual superstar like cody rhodes look if you don't don't want to put on zane whatever but cody cody rhodes can be a champion for a month or a year and your business ain't going to go down but, like, but do you, do, if they kick, if they kick the can at SummerSlam, or kick the can even with him running the gauntlet at, at Royal Rumble, do you really think his T-shirt sales are going to go down? I don't think that they're going to go down. I do think that you're putting a ceiling on how big he can get. I think that you had, I think that this is Sean versus Austin, and. Sean beats Austin at Mania so that he can lose to him at SummerSlam. That's what I think that this is. I think that I think Cody Rhodes in WWE is a huge deal, and they're 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 treading water with it right now. And I don't want them to not. I want I dude. I want him to be the biggest star in the world, and so and they should too. And that's my thing is that Stone Cold wasn't stone cold yet he beat sean at mania and then he got catapulted i I, he's in a feud with the guy that was probably the best guy they've had in 20 years but my but my point is is that it's for no stakes it's not so that you can get a title match it's not so that it's it's just so that you can beat a guy and to me this feels like the most incredible first title defense that Cody ever had would have been against Brock, who was pissed off that he couldn't face Roman Reigns for the championship. And then well, right away, then, then got to face Cody and then Cody snookered one on him. And now you have this broken arm thing and how's Cody. Get, I feel like all of the writing is in place. It's just that Cody was supposed to have the belt. That's how I feel like it, this is. Well, I also think that, you know, they want to put Cody on the redemption tour. And they want him to, like what Andretti said, earn it. So I think that they're also with... Dude, he, huge, he ain't going to earn it more than he would have with a with a purple no, pack. Like, and, that's, and that's I, my point. Is No, that, I know. and I totally agree with your point. I don't think you're wrong either. But I think from what their perspective is, is that we're going to build this out another year. And then we're going to get the really big moment for Cody. And then we're going to just go right back through the Rolodex of people. And then like you could bring Brock back in because now Brock is pissed that he probably is going to lose in Saudi Arabia. I'm assuming, but Uh, maybe it it feels, it feels to me like Cody's going to get number one in the rumble and beat everybody. Yeah. And then like, you can just shuffle the deck on all of his opponents Heels yeah, and whatnot. Point, you can just reshuffle Lashley, it once you get. Drew, and, but so, but, but, well, Drew might not even be there by. Royal He's not Rumble. Going anywhere. So, but so then here's my here's my thing here is that are we going to get Roman and Solo? Before, like, well, Roman see, I and think Solo to me be, feels like a WrestleMania match. Yeah, it could be. Or, that or, could be, or, or it could be, be SummerSlam. Yeah, it could be. But I, I I think there's still there's still a lot of gas in the tank on the bloodline. So we got we still we've got everybody involved now. All four people are involved in like uh, you know arguments and, and drama with each other, right? All four right. of them are now involved. So this is going to blow up now. Whether or not that happens Saturday or it happens at SummerSlam or it happens at you know Survivor Series or whatever, it's gonna maybe maybe Survivor Series is where it all blows up. But well, you know, I think I, that the real we're getting there. We're getting to it. I think that the real thing here too, where we might get some clear direction is whatever happens at money in the bank, because Roman's not supposed to be at money in the bank. And depending on who's in that money in the bank match, like what if solo wins money in the bank? Sure. Uh, That's a good idea too. So, I mean, that just kills your money in the bank gimmick again, because you know, the guy probably won't win the title, but but it it further, it it furthers that that it kicks the can down the road for SummerSlam. This, this story is really hot and it's really good. And and they need to, to keep it active well right but my 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 counterpoint is is that so what if solo won the money in the bank and cody was the champion i know i know then don't 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 you don't don't you have don't you have some backroom dealing with the godfather where roman says you give me that briefcase 
Everything or, you're saying isn't wrong. Like, and that, and not nothing of what you guys are saying is wrong either. And I, I do want to be clear with that. Is that you know, and and that that's the best thing about wrestling is that like these disagreements and fantasy booking and things are what make all of us bigger fans. I to me though, like the thing that I cannot get across enough is that I seriously feel like all of this booking is Cody was going to be the champion. Yeah, and we we kept everything the same, and Cody is going to be the and champion. It, it, it could it could be as simple as the old man didn't want a guy to win the belt that had never been the never even yeah. been champion across the street. Yeah, it could, could be it, as, it it could be could as dumb been. and as simple as that. Absolutely, uh, but t- dude, that tell you what that was that was some that was good, fellas. Thank you. I, yeah. I feel alive. I feel alive <laughs> after all that. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh let's run through this card uh for Saturday. Don't forget one o'clock. They they did that. They did mention that about a hundred times because I watched the yeah. first. I watched uh, I watched half of it, the whole first half of it. And my only comments, and I did want your quick take on this too. Um, so Andretti and I, when we were at the uh, Raw after WrestleMania, we have no idea when they're on commercial. So like that's what you right. said about that Seth thing. You had no idea right. that that was on the show. That was right. important. I- it ended up being really awesome. And so I heard it later. And that was what frustrated me is when I texted you guys on the side and I was like, oh, like that was Seth was on raw because yeah. uh, for the, so, so for the fans at home, I immediately texted Andretti and bake and said, uh, they promised Seth and Seth got cut because I didn't know that he was there. Um, and so the bad thing about it is, is that they present the uh backstage interviews or whatever the same way that they do dude i saw the wrestlemania uh uh whatever the hey 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 you know yeah, that, the that, replay. that yeah 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 i i saw that 60 times yeah and then i would also see things that were like vignettes for like stone cold uh, w- wwe network specials is that yeah. right and so i thought that that set thing was just a promo for something on a network you know it's what I mean? unreal like, yeah they, yeah, they so. do such a poor they do such a poor job for a company that has like so much like they have their shit together in terms of like production and stuff like that like yeah. they do a really bad job of letting you know what's going on yep. in the building yep. oh but boy um, that video package was unbelievable oh it was awesome oh buddy it was good well, and here and here was the thing is that i i didn't know it was awesome until i came home yeah like seriously, because I was, I was, I, like I said before, I was, I took a pee break. I was eating pretzels. You know, I was doing, I was doing all these things because I didn't think that we were, you know, I thought that it was just yeah. more of the the same, but no, it was Seth Rollins was awesome. And I, I, I really thought that that did a great job building up that match. And I'm also triple glad that, and I assume that he's going to win this championship. I'm triple glad that he's going to win this championship. I think that this is the best way that he ever could have had his rehabilitation culmination go. He's going to be the, so, be the first guy, the first guy to ever yeah. help hold every belt. And look, yeah. he, he's always been Triple H's guy, man. And it's it's really cool to see that that journey with Rollins and Triple H was what 15 years ago, probably around there. And, and we WrestleMania 33 was that match. We've come to this place here where where he's going to be the first guy to ever hold every belt. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, that and, is one and... of that that match is one of the three main events for the weekend. So uh, Seth uh, Rollins versus AJ Styles for that WWE World Heavyweight Championship is going to be awesome. And yeah. you guys are totally right. Like Seth is going to win that belt for sure, it's, and his arc is awesome. It's all. It's also really funny that the Saudis get three main events. Like I hope next time they, <laughs> I hope next time they get four main events, and then the next time they get five main events, and then you know, <laughs> in like four shows, it's the entire show is main events. Yeah, you know, first first show in WWE history that is all main events. Eight it's all, main events. They, yeah, they're eight. just looping. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> La- yeah, yeah Lacey, Lacey Evans and Natalia is the eighth main event. Right. Crown Jewel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh the other the other matches we got for Saturday uh are Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus uh, in the singles. We got uh Bianca Belair and Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship, and we got Rhea Ripley versus Natalia. For the SmackDown Women's Championship. Pause really quick. Uh-huh. 
uh, two out of those three matches have been built really well. So yeah. no problem. Um, I do want to say that, uh, that, and this was um, Andretti had mentioned that Becky, he thought Becky's promo was great uh, on Monday. Dude, Trish's promo on Monday was awesome. Yeah, they they, mean, got, I, they got me more. I, they got me yeah, more. Yeah, I, I felt like she was. I felt like she was a, like I don't mean to say it this way, but like, you know, like an old good looking baby face that was just trying to play heel at first, sure. and she she is she's heelish now, man. She's she's done a really really good job of like finding her way, and her delivery is great. And the the lines that they gave her were all good. And so that contract signing was as good of a build for that match as I could ask for. So I yeah, I, I I'm well, looking so I'm forward a to that. I'm surprised they didn't try to drag this feud out a little bit longer. And unless they are, unless they well, are gonna well, the the initial thing that I heard was this was SummerSlam. Um, however, look, man, I mean, Trish is in her 40s and she has a couple of kids, and Becky has a kid, and so they very well could have said, Look, brother, we got stuff to do, people to you know, <laughs> people to see and whatever. Yeah. So and so that no harm, no foul in that. Uh, and <laughs> that's so awesome. The other, I'm popping myself here because <laughs> the next match is uh, Gunther versus Mustafa Ali for the Intercontinental Championship. And the my, I'm putting it in here. I'm putting the clip in right here. So if you're on YouTube, watch right now. Get a life, kid. The. <laughs> The Brock Lesnar, him that, walking that was great. through him that walking was great. through Gorilla and saying, "Get a life, kid." I am gonna I'm gonna use that piece of I'm gonna use that clip for everything. It I'm is. Glad, I am glad so you said incredible. that because I wanted this. I actually wanted to start. The, I actually wanted to start the show with one of you guys talking to me saying, "Get a life, kid." <laughs> Like I totally forgot about it. <laughs> that. That was that was great. That, that was oh, great. That so great. Be. That better be a three, a thirty-second complete and total ass whipping. Please don't oh, yeah. do something stupid in that match. Absolutely. Uh, and then the are they, uh, they going to give? Are they going to give that crowd a title flip? Are they, do you think that Oscar is going to beat Bel Air? No, not well, yet. Here, here's John, probably. Really? Because well, here's my thing: is that she should have lost to EO Sky. But well, didn't, but didn't because of the she was going to be the longest reigning women's champion, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we got another <laughs> one of those. Yeah. Um, but but seriously though, uh, now if you put that on heel Oscar, then babyface EO could beat heel Oscar. Huh? And that's so true. that's 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 that is the that's my pick for a belt flip. Yeah, that could definitely well happen. I'm, uh, and then, very, I'm I'm very good with that. So hopefully we can if they're gonna if they're gonna do a flip, I think that's the right one. Yeah, that, yep, that's yep. a good call. That's definitely a good call, though. Uh, and then we've already talked about our three main events. We got uh, Lesnar and Rhodes in a singles match, which I definitely think Cody is going to win that match. Uh, we already talked about the Reigns and Solo versus uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for the uh, undisputed tag team championship, and then we got Seth freaking Rollins versus AJ Styles, and what. This this actually I'm really I really this might be the best Saudi show they have ever put on. Looking at this card right now, we all go into these Saudi shows and we're always like, damn, like the, this could be the best show they ever put on in Saudi. But this really, I really feel confident in the show. Yeah, the last two were very good to great, and yes. this this one will be too. Here's the big difference: is number one, um, whenever they book those initial shows. It always was either way too gimmicky or uh -huh. they had way too many either part time or checked out people that look, man, you're coming there to make eight million dollars. And so you ain't going to, you know, we're not getting our be their best right right now. Now, it, this is like WrestleMania B. Everybody yeah. that's on the show is going to be a primetime player they know that the engagement on the network is as high as it's ever going to be or it's ever been, excuse me. And so people are going to have their working boots on. And that was demonstrated by those last couple of shows. And so we are going to have an awesome show. Here's one thing that I want to note though, as you were going through those, 
is that you sort of just blew off saying Cody's going to win. If you guys are playing Lester, the drag, this was winning that match, dude. Well, if you guys are playing the drag it out game, then it needs to be Brock wins and Cody takes two months off to heal his arm. Well, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's you beat me on a fluke and you beat me when I was hurt. And now we need I, to have the third match. The reason I said that is because I totally forgot that Cody won that match at Backlash. Damn it. Yeah. So, yeah, Lesnar's winning that match on Saturday. I totally forgot about that. Well, and, and I I don't I, I don't have a problem with Lesnar winning that match. The oh, I only don't thing, the only, no, I, Dude, I love Brock. The only thing is, is that if they're going to do a third, like, I, 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 Brock has this thing with Roman where he's not allowed to win, fight for the title. Well, we, the third, we, the third match can be at SummerSlam. Well, but we need something that says that the winner of this blah. Like somebody needs to get something for winning this match. These are two main event people that look, man, you'll always get me by just having great matches with great people. But like, what are we getting here? So why why do, why would Cody care? Uh, you know, if he loses to Brock, if his path to WrestleMania is just going to end up being going to the Royal Rumble. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm inclined I, to believe that we're getting there. Yeah, so I, I, I hope that if we have a third, that we have stakes tied to the third. I hope. And what, I, and I'm maybe, sure we will. And, and maybe it's Cody can't fight for a title, and then Brock beats him clean, middle of the ring. Dude, if, and if, then, that, if and that's then what Cody, it is. And then, and then Cody, 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 goes GC, Cody goes to <laughs> GCW. <laughs> and he beats Broski. He beats a uh, Nick Gage. <laughs> Marsha Slamovich for the GCW yep. belt. Yep, beats no, beats Marsha Slamovich for the GCW belt. Maybe that'll be it. Oh my! Well, it, good segue for Cody Rhodes by that, there. By that Back point, his... Dark Sheik will be the champ anyway. Oh my It'll God! We're not talking. You know what? I thought about this yesterday, Andretti. I thought about Ponytail Patterson, and if you we're going to see him at that show at Long. I I saw. I, I I honestly did see a couple people that that we we would have recognized from the some of the shows that we went to, but not not too many. Not too many. Oh, okay, <laughs> that just popped me. So, uh, but. We're going to segue now to uh, AEW. Uh, we are recording this as Dynamite is uh, rolling right now, 36 minutes into Dynamite. Um, we got a pretty big card here for Double or Nothing, and it's going to start off with uh, Matt and Jeff Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy, Ethan Page, and the Guns. Uh, like, I don't know what Cassidy... I mean, I, I don't care really about that match. Uh, it's pretty cool that you know we're gonna get Jeff back. Jeff seems I haven't, I don't even know where we're at in storylines here. So well, here's, here's the thing, John is pre-show? that the well that that's a pre-show match, two thousand sure. percent. Yeah, and, Thanks, and, and here and here's the thing is that this is a rampage storyline match, which would be great if anybody watched Rampage. Well, yeah, that's true. That's the like, problem. Seriously, like I mean that, like. This that this the idea of having this on the pre-show is great because you're paying off a rampage storyline. The problem is 250 people watch rampage. So, yeah, that's yeah. So this this will I guarantee you, man, the names that you just said, the names that you just said, we're this is gonna be a very good pre-show match, but well, you know, kind of breaking news here. Uh Tony Khan announced 14 Jeez. minutes ago. Do we, do we want to do breaking news? Well, I mean, kind of not. I don't know. I kind of want to watch the show. Go ahead. Give it to me. Well, uh, about the good... audience here. The audience here. The yeah, audience you're right. is, is... You're right. Is, you're is, right. Is I, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Right, go ahead. Well, longtime friend of Andretti is now All Elite. Aussie Open is All Elite. Really? Yeah. Well, we know that contracts in that company don't mean shit, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. All, 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 all I know is that Kyle Fletcher is freaking awesome. Mark, is. Dave, Mark Davis is fine, but Kyle Fletcher is freaking awesome. Mark Davis is better than fine. He's in the Andretti pit crew, and you better recognize that. He is well, I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm not going to mince words. Kyle <laughs> Fletcher is freaking awesome. Mark Davis is all right. <laughs> That was so great. Uh, no, dude, that's that. I look, man. 
It's 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 wonderful. It's just that you have nine thousand people and yeah. maybe another show and uh, whatever. Put a collision. You know, cut private party after this match. Seriously, have, seriously, have cut an private extreme party. deletion march. I don't want anybody to lose their job. Sorry, private party, but no, they they can lose their jobs. It's okay. They can, yeah. Uh, next on the card, we got Chris Jericho and Adam Cole in an unsanctioned match, a lights out match. So that's I'm actually seeing this for the first time. That makes me excited. Um, my, my, my quick two cents on this is first off, anybody that is listening, that is an observer, uh, subscriber, go back and listen to wrestling weekly with Les Thatcher, like two weeks ago and hear him say why the false count anywhere match with, uh, Roger strong made no sense. I made no however, sense. Yeah, however, I, I can't wait to see this match build be damned. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be that's, awesome. You got, you you have two superstar pros. This is going to be great. Build made no sense, but this is going to be great. This is my biggest problem with AEW is that these builds that they've done for the last year and a half make no sense. And then, but the matches and the payoffs are great. That's my only problem. I want the build. They need to get and 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 not just that, John. Is that they also have builds that are good that yeah. never get paid off. They just yes. take too long. Exactly. The, the same way that I'm hoping that the WWE doesn't overstay their welcome with certain people, mm -hmm. AEW has time and time and time again overstayed their welcome with feuds, not with people, but with feuds. Agreed. But, that, like we, by the time we get to the payoff, nobody cares. Longest story ever told. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Give it to me, we, brother. What we got? We got the uh, anarchy in the arena. That match this, is going to be. This awesome. will be the match. Of, this will be the match of the weekend. Like, Absolutely. This, there is, I, there's no doubt in my mind. This is, this is a, if, if we're doing betting over, over unders, the, the betting over under on this is five and a quarter stars. And that this is, this is going to be, a, dude, everybody I'm going to take, the, way, I'm, I'm gonna take the over on five and yeah, a quarter. Everybody's way too good. This is, this is going to be 25. That anarchy in the arena last year was so great. Now, terrible because people got seriously injured. But the <laughs> yeah. match was so great. And so I, I, I cannot wait. This is the one thing this weekend that I can't wait to see is it's, this match. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. I'm super pumped for that. Uh, we got the uh, international championship with Cassidy. Uh, get, or yeah, Orange Cassidy uh, is going to defend it in a blackjack battle royale. I don't really know what to expect from this. They already let me down a lot with the uh, Casino Battle Royale. I'm assuming this is kind of the same thing, just yeah. renaming I it. Know, so. I don't know what it means. I, don't, I just don't know what it is. I'm yeah. assuming it's rebranded. Can we can we just put on record really quick, though, that um, none of us liked the Atlantic Championship or no. the International Championship, and all that Orange Cassidy did was turn it into the best thing in the company since, like, Kenny Omega's title reign like this the the like seriously dude he's he, orange is incredible and this title reign's been incredible this this is so good I so I haven't sad, been along so for many, the ride but so I called it the matches. I called it the all American belt today in the chat <laughs> but um but yeah we got every one of these matches has been good so I I I'll, I'm looking forward to this yeah uh, the only uh, we got Jade and Taya for the TBS Championship. I'm sh I feel like this might be a downer match, probably for everybody. A little let up. Look, it's 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 too late, man. I I don't know what to do with Jade, but Valkyrie is is, is I hate to say it. As you, I mean, we're all going to get there eventually, but she's she's just she's a little slow. And she's not I as good. She's not as great as her feel, husband. I don't buy. I just don't buy it. I don't buy her anymore. Is the thing, and I I, I just don't buy it. She's not as awesome as, as her husband, Johnny Down Under, or Johnny Pandemonium. And here's here's the deal, Andretti, is that if you don't buy it, I don't know who else can beat her for it. Unless, unless, unless we go harken back to the Lorax, where there was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Okay. Put that belt on Willow Nightingale. I agree, hundred yeah. percent. Amen. So if it's not going to be Taya, then put that belt on Willow Nightingale. Have Jade beat uh, Taya for sixty and zero or whatever it is, 
and that and have Willow be the person that ends up doing it. That that's the, to me that's the move. Man. Such a great move. Uh, then we got the TNT Championship with Wardlow versus Christian Cage in a ladder match. I I don't know why it. I'm really down on Wardlow because they really fumbled the shit out of him after last uh, uh, the revolution well, 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 no no it was double or nothing double or nothing he, okay sorry dude, he power bombed symphony to mjf and all of us wanted him to win the world title yes and then and then he just had uh, this is his one year anniversary of mediocrity mm. um and so the only reason that i if if you know i'm being conspiratorial i think that the only reason that they're doing this is that christian believes that in this match, he can put him over the most. That and being said, watch Christian win it. <clears throat> <laughs> if if they if they play hot potato with this title anymore, like they've completely diminished everything that they built with Cody in the initial inaugural run and with that Brody belt Lee and everybody else. Yeah. Well, the thing that, thing that, thing about this though is that I'll say it again, I. I don't mind hot potato with a television belt. And this is called the TNT belt. That means that it's a, te- it's a television championship. So it, I watch Johnny B bad and, and um, Lord Steven Regal and Arn Anderson and all kinds of people pass around a TV belt. And because I got to see it on Saturday night every week, I never cared. So hot potato with this one doesn't matter because Orange Cassidy messed around and made the international championship a bigger deal to me than this one. Agreed. So yeah, I don't agreed. know about you guys, but like for me, they this accidentally turned into a TV belt. So let it be then. Like seriously, like, I, 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 don't, just, I I don't have only, for, I got nothing for Wardlow right now, man. So well, I'm it, I'm all in favor of putting the belt on Christian. And here's the other thing that I would highly suggest is putting a 15 minute time limit on these TNT title belt matches. Yes. I agree totally with that too. Yes. Agree. That, 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 that would I think that that's put the move. A, yeah, Seriously. put a time limit. Because yeah, put a time limit orange, on them, keep them short and concise yep, and just yep, keep them rolling. Yep. Orange Orange accidentally made that that other belt that they created out of nowhere mean something. And so to make this belt mean more, I would make it more entertaining for television people. And then the other thing too, is if you put it in 15 minute matches, now you bring in your El Hijo uh, Del Vikingo, you bring in your um, uh, commanders because Mm -hmm. those guys will have insane eight minute matches. Yes. So yeah, that's that's what I think. I think put a 15 minute uh, time frame on this one. And if Christian's the one that ushers that in, and you know what? If we're meta booking, maybe Christian says, you know what? I've done this too long yeah. for me to work a 40 minute or 60 minute match. Yeah. 15 minute time limits is all I'm doing. That's Dude, not that would a, be awesome. It's not a, bad and a great idea. and a great heel move. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then uh, we moved to the World Tag Team Championship with uh, FTR versus Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. And Mark Briscoe is a special guest referee. And this match is going to rock titties. That's just my opinion. This, well, here's the thing. This match is going to play a lot of fan service to everybody that this match is supposed to play fan service to. See, AKA like, you know me, I mean? me and Andretti. Yeah, like, and it's not, <laughs> it's, but it's not just you guys. Like there, there's a lot of people that are huge FTR guys or that are huge with um you know, the, the Jay Lethal deal or Jeff Jarrett, or they like Jarrett and, uh, you know, what? so this should be fun. I don't know if this will be good in terms of work, but this will be really fun. So Mm -hmm. I have no problem with this, but, and I think the fact that they have Briscoe being their special guest ref, and then the angle that they did where they had, um, uh, homeboy, uh, Give him the uh, pile driver while he got blinded by alcohol. I thought it was brilliant. Thought that was a great angle. So I'm good with it. Absolutely. And then and, uh, and, and pick an FTR. FTR should win this. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then we get uh, our last two world championship matches. We have the uh, women's world championship with Hater and Tony Storm. Dude, I don't really. This is on the card. 
So Wait, who, who's who is FTR up against? Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. Put the belts on them, dude. I, look, man, does, it doesn't. I don't care if you put them on them. I like both. I like both teams just as much. They're all both teams are I awesome. I don't feel like FTR needs belts. Well, I well, guess and, it depends on what they do with Collision. Yeah. Right. And 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 the big thing is is that Mark Briscoe being in there, no matter what happens, it'll make sense. Yeah. Like, or should or should anyway. Should yeah. Like, you know, it's yeah, gonna be because, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I I really like the idea, and, and I think that I don't know what is gonna happen. I don't know if they're gonna announce collision tonight or not i'm assuming that's what everyone keeps saying is that collision there the the building is getting announced and cm punk is probably going to be announced i don't know if that's what it's it's supposed to be the building they announced collision last week this week is supposed to be the building so it's either going to be chicago or daly's place yeah so they can run run a jostown war memorial arena if they want to do that (laughs) no i listen i go i'd go back to the giant center i'd i'd drive the seven hours to get there it's got it's gotten farther away you said Listen, you man, said six and a half earlier. I I can't. I I don't control geography. I'm I'm your map guy over here. Yep yep yep. Uh, and then I yeah I had no idea that Jamie Hader and Tony Storm. I, I feel like we're we're kicking the can too much here. We're, uh, didn't we just well, see this? Didn't we see this again? Or like well, I, I, I imagine the idea here is is that you have a top contender from the outsiders or whatever their names are, and yeah. then you have Jamie Hader. And so, um, you know, well, my to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this is building up to the first woman's blood and guts match. I would, I would like that. This whole, like this cool. whole thing, this whole thing with the the outsiders and the the homegrown. What a dud! Can we get it this is. over with? It's well, a dud. And, and here's the, and here's the, here's the thing, Andretti, is that blood and guts might save it. That's what and, I. That's, and, yeah. and, and what I mean by you know, like, like, so, and the only reason I'm saying that is, is here's the reason we've been doing this 12 month long thing. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. Maybe so. Maybe no. That would be really interesting if they would do a women's blood and guts. Like that would be really interesting. I don't know if like these char- cast of characters that they got here. Are the or th- there's no better cast of characters than them to do it. But at you, the same time, yeah, I do- dude, brittle, brittle bleed, hater will bleed. Uh, so your baby faces will bleed, and yeah. so if your baby faces, they'll have Sheeta. So if your baby faces will all bleed, then do it. And here's the other thing. You know, dun dun dun. Breaking news on the Ponsky. Just had an idea. Um, the other person you throw in, if people have been watching All Access, is you throw in Thunder Rosa to be with the heels because yeah. she hates Britt Baker. Absolutely, it's not a terrible call either. Do it for a one off. Do it for a one off, and let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm just ready for all these people to go and do feuds and not do this stupid thing where everybody's together which is, feels very it, it just it, it just it does not it has no legs man I'm, I'm just ready for it to be over with yeah, i agree and then uh in our main event we got the four pillars of aw in the world the aw world championship match we got mjf as a champion jungle boy darby allen and sammy guevara well, maybe we'll figure out this week whether we're supposed to like sammy guevara or hate him because i don't know what the hell i'm supposed to think with that guy at this point yeah i i don't know so I'm, I'm assuming he's good and my my 15 second input here is that this reminds me of double or nothing 2021 first match in front of the crowd after they came off of the insanely hot kenny omega and john moxley feud which we just came off of the insanely hot daniel bryan and um MGF feud the last pay-per-view where are they going to go what are they going to do well they did a four-way and they stumbled into orange cassidy being in there and i you know i don't even remember who else but i got news for you man or maybe it was a triple threat but i got news for you that match was awesome and orange like more than one time tricked me into thinking he might win that match yes and so the same thing will happen here Everybody knew that Kenny Omega was going to win the triple threat or the four way or whatever that was at the double or nothing 2021. Everybody knows that uh, MJF is retaining here. I am looking forward to be 
taken away in the moment of thinking that one of these guys, namely Darby, Darby is going to win. Um, I think that at the end of the day, uh, that Darby Allen turning heel and then facing Sting in Sting's retirement match at Wembley or Jungle Boy turning heel makes the most sense. One of those okay. two things need to be the storyline because I, MJF's winning. So Darby turning heel and his last match being against Sting. Okay. Hey. hey. That's a little something, something. Yeah, the the com the common internet thing that I've seen so far has been people think Jungle Boy is going to turn. I yeah. will go. I will go against the grail or the the uh, go. I'll go against the crowd, and I think that it's actually going to be Darby, and that Darby then faces Sting and beats Sting in his retirement match at Wembley. That's what I said. I'm all for it. I like that idea. Yeah, I, I, I like I'm just so I, far. I, I'm so far out on Jungle Boy that I don't even care anymore. I don't know if. I don't know if turning him heel helps. I mean, it, well, the, the, the turn gives him fresh life. But here's the other thing is, is if you turn Darby and not Jungle Boy, you can almost like Bret Hart 97 slow turn Jungle Boy to be like, dude, everybody that's good is bad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, and like, I'm trying to do the right thing and you guys keep screwing me over. Like, yeah. so, so they, they might actually maybe be able to do it that way. Um, but yeah, I, I think Sammy ends up being a good guy um, because of the way that this has been, this has been too weird for him to not be a good guy. Uh, and then I, my, you know, you heard it here first folks on the pod ski, this match either in the match or directly afterwards leads to a Darby turn. And then we have Darby and sting in Wembley stadium for the retirement match. Do you think, you think Sting's going out that quick? That's soon. Yeah, I think so. Since his last year, man. Can we not get, can we not get like a trios run or, or a tag team run or something just so we can get him a belt one time? Well, I don't think he needs a belt though. Here's the thing though. Is we got all summer, brother. Maybe, maybe, maybe he does. You know, you know, like that something like that TNT belt, or maybe that all that all Atlantic belt or whatever. There, there's creative and fun ways. Look, man, if I'm Orange Cassidy and I'm on this insane run, and you say, "Hey, you're gonna lose this belt to Sting," do you think I'm saying no? I'm saying, dude, tell him to walk in the ring and and. Uh, Give me an elbow and a scorpion deathlock, and I'm tapping in half a second. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Uh, so i I think I think that there's a bunch of different ways you can skin the cat. Yeah, i I like it. I think that there's gonna be there's a lot of good. There's two really awesome shows we just laid out for you here uh, this weekend. Memorial Day weekend always ends up being a big wrestling weekend well, now, all, especially it's with also, AEW. It's also NXT Battleground this weekend, yeah, there, which there is an I don't NXT know. Show. I don't oh, even totally. want to get into it because I don't even know what the hell it is. So I, mean, I we, have we no idea either. That. Talk about that later, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, be sure to check out those shows. And uh, I have, uh, we were supposed to cut off in three minutes. And may I suggest in this three minutes that we give 60 seconds of punk? Oh, All right. hit it. Yeah, you know what it is. 60 seconds of punk, and we on one. Coming from the East Coast to the West Coast, 60 seconds of punk, hard cut off. What? All right. I'll go first since since uh, since that. Okay. So this is our, this is our new segment, by the yep. way. Yep. Yep. So we have a 60 second hard cutoff. So once we get to 60 seconds, we're done talking and there is no rebuttal. Okay. Start so my, off. yep. My 60 seconds of punk for me starts now. Okay. So really fast to me, I was never a big CM Punk fan. Okay. He totally won me over with his return at that rampage at the Chicago show. However, to me, this feels a lot, especially with the new bad stuff brewing. This feels a lot like the NBA, uh, the NWO being jammed into the WWE in 2002. Stone Cold liked Kevin Nash. He liked Scott Hall. I don't know if he liked Hogan, but he didn't want them to work there. 
And that's sort of what I feel here. So if we're not going to be able to make this work in the short term, then I think we need to cut bait with, bait with Punk in the long term, meaning I would keep him as a special attraction, only bring him back for big time shows to work programs with people that he likes and that like him so that you can draw money and maximize the rest of his contract. I'm not saying lose CM Punk. I'm saying if this doesn't work, then please let's get on and use him better. I'm done. That was exactly one minute. That was good. Thank that was you. Awesome. Andretti, right, you want to go? Yeah, I'll go right now. You ready? Yep. Tell Can't me when it starts the clock. Clock, clock is right. clock is starting. Okay. I don't have I don't have much, but all right. Go. I just I want I want people I want people to work together. I want them to be able to work together. And if we can't all put our egos aside to work with each other, regardless of whether or not my buddy Mongoose bit you on the ear when it was, we were fighting in the back, you know, I mean, look, that's what it is, man. I, I just, it, it's either worth it or it isn't. And is it, is it, let's get, let's get to, let's get this thing going and work together and make some money together because, or just, or just don't, or just don't either way, <laughs> figure it out or don't figure it out. But like the, the limbo between it, that keeps happening week to week with the tweets and I don't know if I'm going to show up and all this stuff, dude, enough, enough is enough, man. Put your ego aside, either come to work or shut the fuck up. All right. Well, here comes my 50 seconds. of (laughs) (laughs) All right. Here comes my 60 seconds of punk starting right now. All right. All right. So CM Punk, him coming back, totally revitalized my what he looked like to me in my eyes. And he instantly became my new guy, especially with Cody on the outs. And his run was awesome. He ends up getting hurt, which killed it dead. And then we were supposed to have the summer of Punk that got killed dead, obviously, with the whole fight. And personally, and with all the tweets and everything, and with Warner saying that they, they don't want him, I think that they're all blowing smoke. They're all full of shit. I think that this is all going to end up being a whole fucking work. They're all going to work together, but they want everyone to believe right now that they can't stand each other and that they hate each other. And the real payoff will be in a year or two years in a really big blood and guts match. And then we're going to get the singles matches that go along with it. And that will be my first 59 seconds of punk. Yeah. Look at that. Who would have thought some skinny atheist nerd would get three full minutes dedicated to him three on the podcast? Yeah, on, 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 a po- on a podcast as prominent as the pod ski. So, uh, dude, but- I, I seriously, I will do this every week until the end of time. Even if we're saying like doing, the same thing over 60, and over again. 60 seconds of punk every week. I, 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 60 seconds of punk makes more sense than anything we've ever done. Even if it just turns into us being like, yeah, dude, I watched him, uh, (laughs) you know, win the ECW championship is pretty cool. Like whatever. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So with that, uh, be sure to check us out on, uh, YouTube, uh, and Twitter at the underscore Podski, Instagram, the underscore Podski, check us out on, uh, Facebook as well. Uh, we will be doing, I'm here to report that I am shutting the show down early tonight because I'm going downstairs to watch Vanderpump Rules. We are doing a special Memorial Day bonus show. We're going to be covering the the only show that kicks AEW's ass on a weekly basis. Uh, this Vanderpump Rules reunion is going to be insanely wild. And if you don't watch Vanderpump Rules, you absolutely should. Uh, we're going to bring in some guests for that. So that is going to be a bonus show of the week, non-wrestling related. Uh, so um, be sure to check all of us out again on all the socials. Download, rate, review, and subscribe. Thank you to the three-man booth. And enjoy all the wrestling this weekend. The Indy 500 for Andretti and the Coca-Cola 600 for the chewing and racing section. And with that, <laughs> we will see you next time on... The Podski.